Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for finding the time to enroll in today's webinar. I will introduce myself first. Some of you already know me. I'm Dr. Waiza Udin, Senior Lecturer at the Mauritius Institute of Education, which is the leading institution of this webinar. So our topic today is addressing challenges posed by mass closure of schools during COVID-19 pandemic lessons from international context. The COVID-19 pandemic has unsettled the educational system caused an unprecedented closure of schools around the world. The near total closure of schools and universities has considerably shaken the routine of the various stakeholders in education, namely policymakers, educators, learners, and parents. Moreover, the school closures have also shed on numerous social and economic issues. This situation is unparalleled in the 21st century. Educational authorities around the world have responded in various ways to ensure the continuity of education. So this webinar brings together experiences from educational institutions involved in teacher education and innovation from six different contexts, namely South Africa, Malaysia, France, Mauritius, Cameroon, and India. The aim of this webinar is to share practices undertaken by institutions to ensure continuity in education. Before we start, let me explain how we will communicate during this webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, just write in the Q&A section, you, which you will find below the screen. Discussions, presentations will be over. For those joining us now, welcome to the webinar. So overview of the webinar, first, the, the keynote speaker will deliver his speech, his address. Secondly, the six pre presenters will deliver their presentation. And lastly, the common questions will be answered by the presenters. Let me give you a brief introduction of the keynote speaker. The keynote speaker for today's webinar is Dr. Omnath Verma. Dr. Omendra Nath Verma is the director of the Mauritius Institute of Education and holds the UNESCO chair in higher education for Mauritius. As a professional, he has been closely associated with several projects in the field, closely associated with in the field of education and has worked closely with the Ministry of Education in diverse projects and policy making stances since 2000. He is a firm believer in technology and has initiated several projects to make MIE a lead institution in the provision of education geared to the needs of the 21st century. Dr. Omnad Vorma has also collaborated with international organizations such as South African Research and Development Center, the International Bureau of Education, UNESCO, and he's at present collaborating with the World Bank and the African Association of Universities of the Africa Center for Excellence Project. Dr. Omnad Vorma, you are welcome to deliver your keynote address. Good afternoon, all of you. Uh, I would uh, wish to first start by thanking all the distinguished panelists who responded to our invitation for this webinar. I also thank all the participants who have joined us and we look forward to your comments and suggestions. I will speak briefly on the initial phase of the lockdown, how we experienced it here, and how we ensured continuity of our service, the lesson learned, and most importantly, the opportunities we see as a result of this pandemic. Obviously, we were caught unaware. We had to rely on what we had at hand. Therefore, we shifted gear immediately to an online mode. Luckily, at MIE, we had already implemented technological innovation some two years ago when we implemented the Microsoft Azure Cloud and Office 365 for all staff and students and the familiar with SharePoint and Teams. However, COVID-19 arrived and twisted our arm into immediate change. 
We were at the seventh week of the semester and we had no option but to quickly empower our staff to effect the shift. The early two weeks of the confinement was quite demanding for us and for the IT unit to assist students and staff at a distance. But luckily our clients being working adults, we did not experience much of the digital divide in terms of access. We used Teams uh, to ensure that we complete all the face-to-face -face sessions at a distance. We now have to tie some loose ends to the completion of the practical classes and lab work. We have brought adjustment in the mode of assessment with some more stringent options to compensate for the examinations, keeping of course quality in mind. Uh, we should bring in some regulations to lay down some more ethical parameters for online classes, a safer option for both our learners and tutors. This has been just in the demand of our staff as well. Nearly after 50 years of being in a traditional institution of teacher education, there was a pressing need to depart from business as usual. But we were taking time to change, probably because nobody else was changing. In countries like ours, we are often urged to go by what developed countries are doing. But I hope today, Mauritius being among the very few countries that have brought the COVID-19 under control, will stop aping policy and be ourselves foreigners of change. However, we never expected COVID-19 to be the most compelling change agent. I believe that tertiary education should lead the way to change. Teachers should exit our institutions, our, 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 our plan, the teachers who learn here in a teacher education institution, we believe they should exit our institution ready for the 21st century. And the university leavers should be ready for the world of work. We are facing a new economic order, and a new face of capitalism, and the unfulfilled promises of globalization. Marx had predicted that capitalism had the seeds of its own destruction, but he was proved wrong then. Today, it appears that Marx was right, his capitalism crossing the boundaries of morality and ethics. The mantra of economic growth went wrong in 2010, but luckily averted. The 21st century, the century of hope and freedom, appears to raise more questions than ever before, uh, than ever before on the shape and future of mankind. We are living in a strange world. I was discussing with someone researching in the pharmaceutical industry in the UK. He told me the best drug that never sold all the time. What will happen to varieties of lesser quality drugs that cost so much to produce? Technology has built in obsolescence that urge people to consume more. We are even brought to despise what we possess through change in model, fashion, and design. Apple telephone, you all know how crazy followers who discard the phone every three years. On the other hand, Schools have survived by not uh, giving much of a choice to learners. However, we are now feeling the uneasiness of our clients and we cannot remain insensitive to their needs. COVID-19 comes as a catalyst for change. It urges us to change our modes of delivery and teaching and we are likely to open our classroom space to scrutiny and accountability. Oddly enough, it has more promises for education if you're ready to grab them. The education system needs a change of mindset. The MIE having a say in the education for children in this country should be the catalyst for change and the time is now. We have a unique opportunity to engage our teachers to think in new directions for the new generations. We need a disruption but not just any disruption. The seed of an ethical disruption of a system should be sown at the MI. We heard the new government policy to welcome the best 500 ranked universities in Mauritius. This is a sign of additional danger and a sign that it cannot be business as usual. 
Today, we view the normal as significantly different from what we could imagine a few months ago. First, the acceptance of online mode has been accelerated. The lockdown helped us to engage in a forced piloting of a new mode of delivery and to convert many so-called, I would call, online atheists to believe in an alternative mode to face-to-face -to -face teaching. The government has legislated and work from home policy, which is well suited to higher education institutions like ours. Though we are not speaking of a complete change to an online mode, we would wish to make the best of both modes, online and face-to-face. -face. One of the biggest gains is probably for Rodrigues, the outer island, those who know, it is uh, around one and a half hours flight from here. There was a resistance to change. The Rodrigan felt that online mode meant lesser concern for them. Now they're becoming a new norm for everyone. The good news is that it's already started and working well during, and it worked well during the confinement period. We are advocating a hybrid model that could enhance the quality of our service as well as challenge us and our students to demonstrate and produce more quality output. However, the most essential element for the success of a new mode of delivery is not the technology, but the pedagogy that should accompany this change. This is closely linked to the nature and problems we are facing in education today. We are still in a reproduction mode of the industrial era, while the world demands creativity, resourcefulness, ability to work on our own, not just our ability to produce knowledge. I feel that this is an excellent opportunity to redesign the teaching and learning landscape for quality. We have developed standards for our undergraduate and postgraduate programs in line with EU guidelines to make our qualifications transferable worldwide. We are associated with a few international institutions of repute, namely University of Brighton, UK, and University of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, and others in the pipeline. We have managed to create online classrooms for our postgraduate diploma, masters and doctoral programs through a blended mode. We target this mode to access an international client at a much lesser cost in association with our strategic partners. Therefore, the future rests on the ability of our teachers to understand what we required for the 21st century learner. We have to help teachers out of their present comfort zone to a new one. We need new modes of delivery and new pedagogy for the future. I strongly believe in the promise of online technology. Unless we change our mindset and embrace new ways of operating, our teachers and schools will not undergo the change we wish to see in a young educated minds of tomorrow. What should we aim at? We should develop a new mindset that opens our learners to the multiple realities of the world and the need to avoid oversimplification. Our teaching should be a representation of the natural complexity of the real world. We should emphasize knowledge construction rather than knowledge reproduction. We should build our, teacher, our teaching an authentic task in a meaningful context rather than abstract instruction out of context for the sake of certification. We should provide a learning environment that mirrors real world settings using case-based learning rather than predetermined sequence of instruction for the sake of getting to examinations. The mode of examination assessment also should change. Our training should foster reflection on experience. Above all, we should support what is called collaborative construction of knowledge through social negotiation, not simply competition among learners just for recognition. Unless we model these new approaches, we'll be training teachers to reproduce the age old school that would not meet the needs of the new century of disruption at our doorstep. We should be able to make sense of the chaos at our doorstep and achieve an accommodation to that chaos. Our experiment with online teaching using technology has reached a new stage with advanced technology. It should continue with the incorporation of a pedagogy that suits teaching with technology. 
Research shows that computers offer the optimal medium for applying a constructivist principle of education, support various strategies and approaches more effectively than any other media. But the teacher should also become an effective manipulator of technology. We need to develop a pedagogy for teaching and learning with computers and ICT. ICT allows the application of distributed problem-based learning for group work, case-based learning with group arrangement in building knowledge, inquiry-based learning, which is a type of self-directed learning, role play, simulation, and game-based learning that support the roles, processes, and the structure of active and authentic learning. In this way, we'll equip our learners to feel comfortable and ready for the world of work as they leave schools and universities. Somehow, education cannot function in a comfort zone. We should be aware of how the world of work functions today. It has always been so. Take a simple example in recent history. In Mauritius, for instance, the cobbler, the tinsmith, carpenter, charcoal maker, dockers, were all much needed trades before, but replaced in the 1970s and 80s and they joined the category of the poor underclass. Later on in 2000, many small businesses and retail shops disappeared. Similarly, very soon, if you're not careful, new technology will replace traditional life culture. Producing food may not happen only in huge fields or by people alone. Those who are resorting to traditional agriculture may risk joining the next category of the poor. Big businesses like aviation is facing difficulty, a difficult period, and many other middle class jobs holders are becoming proletarianized. What happened to the working class in the 50s and 60s is happening to the middle class today. The future world of work will not be all comfort with dedicated pensions at retirement age. While we are advocating technology and working from home, options to learn online. We are not for the disappearance of face-to-face -face teaching in the classroom, but for an option that makes the best of the both worlds because technology is in everybody's pocket. Research has also shown, however, that young people are not effective users of technology for learning. We need to rethink teaching and learning in the new context. Coronavirus has totally upset the equilibrium. When human society is disrupted, the old equilibrium is never restored. Society survives with a moving equilibrium. Today, we are in search of a new equilibrium. We need a new education with technology that will develop new minds and build a truly educated person for the future. Each education should rethink the pedagogy for the new era, be able to instill a new mindset with technology at the closest ally of the teacher, and a facilitator for learning to allow us face tomorrow with more certainty. C. Wright Mill said, if the good society was not there yet, it was the fault of intellectuals, people of knowledge. Rather than bearing the guilt, it should be the catalyst for the better society we wish for tomorrow. On this note, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Roma, for your nice and insightful presentation.